That was AI, and you can swipe left on data privacy. Because AI romantic chatbots over the past few months have garnered over 100 million downloads on the Android platform alone. Welcome to the April episode of The Cyber Expanse, where we bring you the latest cybersecurity news in a short and digestible format so that you can stay informed. So today's first story is about Apple, which has recently taken a proactive step in fortifying iMessage against future post-quantum computing attacks with their PQ3 model. Now you're probably wondering, PQ3 model? What the hell is even that? Well, PQ3, or post-quantum level 3, is referred to as level 3 security, whereby through a new post-quantum rekeying mechanism that periodically refreshes encryption keys, ensuring that even if a key is compromised, future messages remain secure. This move by Apple underscores a broader shift in the industry towards quantum-resistant encryption, alongside other notable efforts by Signal and Proton. With Signal introducing its PQXDH protocol, or Post Quantum Extended Diffie Hellman, and Proton announcing their pursuit of quantum safe encryption through Open PGP, or Open Pretty Good Privacy Encryption, both of which use similar methods of re encrypting messages as they have moved away from traditional RSA standard to a new elliptical curve cryptography. These advancements mark a significant leap in secure messaging, ensuring end to end encryption that is resilient against a theoretical future threat of quantum computing attacks. And Apple, by integrating PQ3 into iMessage, not only boosts the security of their users' communications, but also sets an example for other technology companies to prepare for a post-quantum future. That was AI, and you can swipe left on data privacy. Because AI romantic chatbots over the past few months have garnered over 100 million downloads on the Android platform alone. Mozilla Foundation actually analyzed 11 of these romance chatbots and found that these apps gather huge amounts of people's data, with the Romantic AI app sending out 24,354 ad trackers within just one minute of use, which sent out information to Google, Facebook, and servers in Russia and China. Animal AI, on the other hand, allowed users to create a password with just one character, and Eva AI prompted users to share their photos and voice along with other personal information. By flirting and offering companionship under the guise of a virtual girlfriend, it's been nice talking to you today. Honestly, I've never met anyone like you. The world is harsh. Except you. These apps emulate the girlfriend experience by providing an attractive female avatar which users can customize to their liking. Oh, you don't like girl girls. And even verbally communicate with, whilst telling users that everything stays private and it's a safe space. Instead, they gather huge amounts of your intimate data and sneakily sell it off, providing low security all whilst having dubious ownership. So please guys, don't give them anything and stay far, far away. These things are a privacy nightmare. Also Lockbit, dubbed the world's most harmful cybersecurity group, they're responsible for around 44% of global ransomware incidents, affecting a wide range of sectors, including government, emergency services, and education. Having targeted over 1,700 entities in the US alone, and prominent other organizations worldwide, like Boeing, TSMC, the UK's Royal Mail, and China's largest bank, ICBC. Their activity dates back to tw late 2019, with this timeline detailing their evolution. And they're even known for their apolitical stance, with their extensive global cybersecurity attacks propagated solely for monetary gain. Tell them to bring me my money. Yeah! Operating a ransomware as a service model through their affiliate program to whom they provide access to their Lockbit ransomware as well as their Steelbit data exfiltration tool to carry out these attacks and collect ransoms from victims. By the way, you can find more information on Steelbit in the description below. To make matters worse, they also utilize a double extortion methodology, whereby they not only hold your data for ransom, but threaten to leak it if the ransom is not paid. You might think all is lost. However, an international law enforcement operation comprised of agencies from the UK, US, Australia, and more have cracked down on Lockbit, called Operation Kronos, which on the 20th of February have revealed that they have successfully made two arrests 
frozen over 200 associated crypto wallets with the value of 121 million US dollars. Seized 34 of their servers and have even offered decryption keys to those affected from the thousand decryptors that they obtained from the seizure of Lockbit's infrastructure. The decryptor, which can be found on nomoransom.org, has decryptors for lots of other ransoms as well, and you can check them out below. But wait! There's more! Only four days later, however, Lockbit bounced back, claiming that only 5% of the decryption keys for Lockbit 3.0 were seized, and are even launching a new leak site, as well as vowing to decentralize and strengthen their operations further. They have recently since also invited existing affiliates to rejoin their ranks since a loss in credibility and are also promising enhanced defenses against future law enforcement operations. With rumors also circulating of Lockbit 4.0 potentially coming sometime soon. So watch out guys. Now it's time for the security snippets. Out of nowhere, an AI worm called the Morris 2 appeared on the scene. <laughs> able to autonomously propagate itself through generative AI systems through a technique known as adversarial self-replicating prompt, which basically involves crafting a prompt that when processed by a generative AI system generates another prompt as part of its output. This recursive process allows the worm to perpetuate itself across systems, similar to how a traditional computer worm would replicate itself through networks. By exploiting this technique, researchers demonstrated how this worm could infiltrate AI-driven email assistants, manipulating them to exfiltrate sensitive information from emails or spread spam messages. This form of attack is actually quite similar to SQL injection or buffer overflow attacks, but tailored to the unique operation of generative AI systems, highlighting a significant new threat vector as these technologies become increasingly embedded in our daily routines. And now a counterfeit cryptocurrency application disguised itself as the reputable web app, Bitcoin wallet known as Leather, made its way onto the Apple App Store, setting a trap for unwary users. It's a trap! Crafted by the shadowy entity going by this name. I am reading all of that. The scam was in operation since late February, luring individuals into handing over their cryptocurrencies and NFTs under the guise of the trustworthy platform. The scheme, which came to light following a tweet by George Burke of Portal Finance, who reported a theft of nearly 38,000 STX, amounting to over 120,000 US dollars, with many similar cases. The scam replicated the user interface of the legitimate leather wallet and created a false sense of security amongst users, with fabricated reviews boasting four and five stars. Such tactics exploited the established trust and reputation of the genuine leather wallet, leading unsuspecting users into a trap. With the official leather account tweeting about the scam, and Apple also, in response, has removed the app, after confirming the app was in operation for roughly two weeks. Now switching it up to automotive security, two researchers have recently revealed a method through which attackers can unlock and potentially steal Tesla vehicles. And it's not a flip for zero Canada. Using a man-in-the-middle phishing attack targeting accounts on the Tesla app, the attack exploits the latest app version 4.30.6 and the car version, highlighting a significant security gap in the process of adding a new phone key for vehicle access. They did this by setting up a malicious Wi-Fi network, deceptively named Tesla Guest, a name actually familiar to Tesla users as it's used at charging stations and service centers. By luring Tesla owners to connect to this spoofed network, the attackers presented the spoofed credential harvester, capturing the user's credentials and one-time password. The breach then allowed them to add a new phone key to the Tesla account without alerting the car owner or requiring physical access to the vehicle. The added phone key then enabled the attacker to not only unlock the car, but also start it and drive away. So thank you very much for tuning in to this month's episode of the Cyber Expands. Please like, subscribe, and uh, drop a comment if there's anything you'd like to see next episode. See ya. Bye.